My name is John Deacon. I'm a docent with the City of Santa Maria Parks and Recreation Department. Um, we had a bird walk planned for this Saturday, but because of the pandemic, we decided to do something um, online. And so hopefully you'll find this enjoyable. And uh, maybe the next time we have a bird walk, we'll actually be able to do it in person. And because uh, it's always more fun to see the birds in person than it is to look online and see pictures and that type of thing. Your backyard in this area is probably one of the best places you're going to be able to, to watch birds. You're comfortable. The birds won't be afraid of you because you're in the house and they're, they're outside. Um, if you put a little water feature out there, something like that, that'll help bring them in, especially this time of year, water. It's all about water for the birds right now. There's lots of food around um, with the seeds that you see on the ground and that kind of thing, but water is the number one thing. So if you have an old pie tin, take that outside, um, fill it up with fresh water, put it on the ground, and you'll be surprised that within a day or so you'll start to see birds come to that. So then you have a responsibility of keeping that clean and keeping it full because the birds will start to depend on you. Um, again, I mentioned that this is one of the better places around to bird. Um, Santa Barbara County is probably one of the best places in the United States to, to be a bird watcher. We have a, a tremendous diversity of birds. We've got the mountain birds, we've got the valley birds, and then you can actually go out and see some of the birds that, that like to be closer to the ocean. Same thing with Morro Bay, two of the best places in California, and California is one of the best places in the United States. So we're lucky to be in this amazing area. You could see two, 300 species of birds here um, without a whole lot of effort. For example, in my backyard, I keep a list of the birds I've seen there. I've had a, about 100 birds there now. So, so the birds are all around. Keep an eye out, and, and you'll, uh, if you're lucky, you'll see some rarities. But like I say, there's a lot of common birds out here that are really, really cool. There are two, two times a year that, it's, that we need to kind of separate um, for birding. There's the fall and winter, and then the spring and summer. And the reason why that's important is in the fall and winter, a lot of the birds that breed in Alaska and Canada come down here to spend their, their winter with us. They don't want to stay up there where it's snowy and cold. They want to come down here where it's a little warmer and some of their food sources are available. So right now those birds aren't here. They're up in Canada having babies and we'll see them back in probably October, November. But right now, the cool thing is, is we've got the birds that winter down in South America and, um, and also in Mexico, that come up here to find a nice place like this to, to nest and have, have their young. Some of the birds that, that we see here in the, um, in the spring and summer do, uh, breeding and having, having chicks um, are like the Bullock's Orioles. If you have um, a hummingbird feeder at your house, you may see these large blackbird looking um, Orioles come to your hummingbird feeder. They're really pretty, they're yellow and black. Um, and um, there's also the, hum the hummingbirds. Um, in the early spring to mid spring, you may see 10, 15 hummingbirds at your, at your hummingbird feeder. Um, those hummingbirds that all congregate around those feeders that are coming from South America, they tend to go to the, actually they're just going by your house as a waylay station. They go there, kind of feed, fatten up, and then they head up into the mountains and the desert where they actually have their young. So right, um, a few weeks ago, I had like five different species of hummingbirds at my house. Now I just have one, the, our normal um, Anna's hummingbird, which stays here year round. And, but they also breed and, and they're pretty little hummingbirds, but they're our local um, resident hummingbird. So um, we're gonna talk about a few of the birds that you can see that you have a high likelihood of seeing here at uh, Las Flores Ranch. You could actually see a lot of these at your house too. But let's, let's start with the migrants. There's a, there's a really cool migrant that comes out here. It's called the ash-throated flycatcher. I was here last weekend and um, I saw probably six or seven. They're very noisy um, and they're, they're really pretty little birds. We've got a picture of those that you'll see here in a bit, um, but they have a real pretty brown tail and kind of a, a, a blank stare on their face. They're about this big, if you can tell. Um, they're, they're the biggest flycatcher we have in this area. A little smaller than a robin, but um, larger than a than a sparrow. They're very noisy, and um, but they, if you come out here and take a walk through any of these trails, you'll see and hear ash-throated flycatchers. Um, another bird that we have here that's a resident, it's called a northern flicker, and it's one of our most um, common uh, woodpeckers. 
It's um, used to be called the red shafted flicker, flicker, and then in the in the eastern United States they had a yellow shafted flicker. They decided that they were both the same species, so they're all the northern flicker now. But when you're over here, you'll see the red shafted one, and they're really cool. They're a they're a big um, a big um, woodpecker. They got lots of little uh, um, um, dots on their chest, and they have a nice little black collar that they have underneath their throat, and a little red bandana across the back of their head. But you'll see them feeding on ants and bugs. I mean, they'll feed on just about anything. They could show up at your feeders at your house if you have feeders there. Um, but generally, they're, they're going to be the most common woodpecker you, that you see out in this area. And um, the thing that I like to tell people about the, the, um, the northern flicker is they have a, 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 a variety of calls. And they don't really, really have songs, but they're more calls. And um, if you look those up, I don't have those here with me. But you'll recognize those calls on a lot of Hollywood movies, and there are some of these the the songs or calls that they make are kind of haunting. and And I remember in um, Jeremiah Johnson, the uh, when he when he was walking through the graveyard and there was a, a bird calling in the background. That was a northern flicker doing that. It, it's it always struck me. And and anyway, if you get better at birding, you'll you might see yourself doing some of this kind of stuff. Like at golf tournaments, I'll hear birds on TV and I'll. I go, oh yeah, there's that bird. That's you know, I'm hearing hearing that bird, and and you can do that on other on movies and things like that also. Um, another bird that you all know and is really common out here, it's the um, California scrub jay. Um, you probably have those in your backyard. They um, they're really beautiful birds. They've kind of got a bad reputation. They call them camp robbers, and they do and they do get into other birds' nests. But they're they're one of the smarter birds that we have around. And they will, if you've got them coming to your um, to your feeders or do, in your backyard, I've seen people that have trained them to take peanuts out of their hands. And so they're they're really smart. They're um, they're kind of noisy and raucous, um, but they are really a beautiful bird. A really dark um, blue, quite lar uh, quite a bit larger than a, a western bluebird, which you could confuse them with. But again, kind of a backyard bird that you might have uh, that you might might see. But there are plenty of them here. The last bird I was going to talk about today, I think that's the last one on our list, and it's one that we see, um, um, it's pretty common out here. Uh, it's called a California Thrasher, and it's not, it's not really distinctive in terms of colors. It's a kind of a brown bird. It's kind of big, um, but what it does have is a huge decurved beak, and it uses that to thrash around in the, in the, in the weeds looking for bugs and seeds and things that it might want to eat. But it's, it's related to the mockingbird. So when you come out here to Las Flores, Flores Ranch, if you think you're hearing a mockingbird, which is a all over the call, all over the place kind of a song, if you, li if you listen and you, and you, and you kind of look at where that bird is, you're probably seeing it, you're probably going to see and probably hearing a California thrasher. It's got a call a, call a lot like a mockingbird. Um, but they usually, when they're singing like that, they like to post up. So if you look across the tops of the trees and bushes, you'll usually be able to find one of these guys. The other way to notice them is if you see them running on the ground, they've got a really long tail, and they, that tail really sticks up when they're running. So if you see a bird that's running across the ground out here with a tail that sticks way up, it's, um, it's probably a, um, a California thrasher. That's also when people come to California, if you're an avid bird watcher and you're trying to pad your list of the number of birds that you've seen in the United States, people come to this area, they want to see... The California Thrasher, because this is the only area in the United States that that it occurs, so it's a, a, a um, it's a target for people that are doing that that kind of birding. Um, well, that's all we had right now. Hopefully, um, we can actually get together and see some of the cool birds that we have out here at Las Flores Ranch. Um, but uh, in the meantime, hopefully, I've, I've given you uh, piqued your interest in the in bird watching, and and uh, we can. Um, um, get out there and, and uh, see some cool birds.